Hello everybody, CVM here, joined by, yet again. The BBD. The BBD. A BBD. Oh, it's the BBD. Okay, Don't, get, right. it, don't get it twisted. Uh, right. But we are battling with Standard with new Fate Reforged cards. So, uh, yep. unfortunately the set's only about halfway spoiled, so we don't quite have any new archetypes to bestow upon everybody. Uh, but I am going to be playing with Jeskai Tokens. So. This deck was unleashed upon us all uh, by Yuya Watanabe at the World Championship, and yep. it's just kind of taken standard by storm uh, ever since then. And we have a couple new additions. So the biggest new addition is Monastery Mentor. So uh, the card was spoiled on our very own website last week uh, by Patrick Chapin, and it has gone from $20 to $25, now to $30, continuing to sell out at pre-sales. Uh, so it's obviously a very powerful card, but it's kind of interesting to dissect it. So at first when I read the card, it's a 2-2 two, two for 3 mana with prowess. That's almost playable uh, by itself. But whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you get a 1-1 one, one monk token. Now that is pretty sweet. Yeah. Like we've seen young Pyromancer is quickly becoming the best creature in Vintage, one of if not the best creature in Legacy. Uh, it started to take over standard towards the end of its time in the format. And also it, powerful in modern. And then it rotated out. Yeah, it's also very powerful in modern. And so here we have a creature that's very similar to that. Uh, it costs one extra mana to get into play, has one extra toughness, but it triggers off of non-creature spells instead of instants or sorceries. So we do get tokens off of like Jeskai Ascendancy, which is pretty relevant. And another thing to note too is that the tokens themselves also have prowess. Exactly. So that was the part that uh, I missed at first when I read the card, and then when I realized it, my my brain just exploded. But the tokens have prowess, which is also very, very good uh, because it will end the game very quickly. Yeah. Young Pyromancer kind of you know, gets out of control very quickly, but you have to keep it back on defense. The tokens will end up you know, just getting chumped, and, and will, they're, they're, they'll die when they're attacking, and you're just pushing through damage with the raw number of spells you're casting. Monster Mentor is a little bit different because this card is actually just going to kill you very fast. It's going to get big itself. The tokens are going to get big. And everything just spirals out of control much faster than it did with Young Pyromancer. Yeah, can we make a movement to just call this card Old Pyromancer? Old is, Pyromancer? Yeah, is that, a, is that a thing that can happen? I kind of wish the art was just like this like really old, yeah. grizzled guy with a beard and just like a ninja headband. It's just like Young Pyromancer in 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> Still wearing the Chandra belt buckle? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be pretty sweet. Uh, the, the other new card in the deck is Soulfire Grandmaster. So this is another complicated white mythic from the set, as they both just have a lot of text on them. Uh, it's a 2-2 two, two for 2 with lifelink, and your spells have lifelink. So that means my Hordling Outburst has lifelink, and so does my Raise the Alarm. But it also gives all of my burn spells, like Stoke the Flames and Lightning Strike lifelink, which is pretty sweet. Yeah, and just to clarify, it doesn't actually matter that Raise the Alarm and Hordling Outburst have lifelink, because they don't actually deal damage. But if they did. But if they did, they would, you know, you would gain some life. And so, really, it's only relevant for things like Strike and Stoke. You know, you get to stoke your guy, gain four. It, it turns your Stoke into uh, War Leader's Helix and your Lightning Strike into Lightning Helix. Yeah, which is pretty cool all by itself. Yeah. Now, uh, it might be relevant in older slash more casual formats that it gives spells lifelink, because if I cast Kodama's Reach, and splice Glacial Ray onto it, we're gaining that two life. <laughs> now the, the most, I don't want to say the most important part of this card is the most interesting part of it, is that it has a third ability. It does. So you can pay two and then either blue or red, blue or red, so it isn't mana. So for four mana, you get to give your next instant or sorcery basically buyback. So you add four mana onto anything and the spell goes back to your hand instead of to your graveyard. Which is pretty neat considering we have all these awesome spells in the deck. Horgan Outburst, Raise the Alarm, the Burn Spell, Stoke the Flames we can even cast for free by tapping our creatures and just paying four mana to buy it back. We can even do it with Treasure Cruise. So if you get to Delve a Cruise down to one mana, just add four more and it goes back to your hand. Seems treasure, all right. Treasure Cruise is usually pretty good at feeding the second Treasure Cruise, so. Yeah. I definitely like this card. I think it has a lot of potential. Uh, a lot of comparisons are being drawn to Seeker of the Way. Same body, same casting cost. Seeker is just a much more aggressive card, and I would much rather draw Soulfire Mentor on like turn seven than I would Seeker of the way. Yes. So there's a bit of a balance between the two. Um, one thing I want to point out with uh, Soulfire Men Grandmaster as well is that he, Monastery Mentor, and Stoke the Flames all have this awesome synergy too, especially with Jeskai Ascendancy. So like, if you have this card, this card, the Ascendancy, 
in play at the same time. You can like tap all your guys to stoke the flame them. Well, you can pay four mana to make the to make the next spell go back to your hand. You can tap like f you know a bunch of your creatures to stoke the flames them, uh, triggering the ascendancy to untap them all again. You know, plus you get another guy off of this, mm -hmm. etc. Uh, you get to loot off of Ascendancy as well. And then the Stoke the Flames comes back to your hand, and now you can just tap your creatures to do it again. Yeah. Uh, now, granted, you have to have a couple of red creatures in the mix, too. Like, you probably need some goblins from Hordling Outburst. But, you know, it's really crazy that you can just, like, double Stoke in the same turn and make all your guys huge. Um, and then attack. And then, atta and then still attack, too. And with, like, Ascendancy and Monastery Mentor, like, these 1-1 one -one tokens get plus 2, plus 2 for every single spell you cast. Yeah. So, it's... it's that, it feels like the deck can just go out of control really fast. It absolutely does. Uh, to make room for these cards, you see that there are no Chandra. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have the second Jeskai Charm, and we've cut some Goblin Rabble Masters. So Rabble Master is a very, very good card. Uh, after playing the deck a few times, though, you do side it out on the draw quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like Monastery Mentor is a card that's still going to be fine on the draw. So it I, is. I think that's. I, I don't want to say. It's better than Rabble Master or an improvement over Rabble Master in this deck, but I have a feeling it's going to be. I think so too because Rabble Master is a snowball card where, um, you know, if you're in control of the game, it just ends the game really, really fast. Mm -hmm. And Monastery Mentor is a snowball card as well, but it also plays defense. Yeah. And that's the difference between the two cards. And Monastery Men Mentor is the kind of card where you can build up even in the face of a big board state from your opponent. Rabble Master could never really do that. Yeah, which is definitely really important. Uh, the last sweet card is there's a Defiant Strike here. Uh, so this is actually the Jeskai Tokens main deck from Sean McLaren's article this week uh, that went up on Tuesday. Uh, so make sure you check it out. It's on the premium side of the website. But I really liked this idea. Uh, I wanted to just do a, a red-white deck, but I feel like Mentor has to go to Jeskai Ascendancy, so we're going to give that a shot first. But the Defiant Strike is really cute. Uh, gives us a one mana way to pump our Monastery Mentor, which makes it a 4 4, so it lives through cards like Bio Blight, and can attack through a Corsair Prefix. But it's also just a one mana draw card that you can rebuy with Soulfire Grandmaster. Yeah, that's his name. Yep. For an extra four mana, so it's just like five mana draw card. It's, it's, which, which is pretty cool. It's Protect Your Guy, Kill Their Guy, and Whispers of the Muse for one mana. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I have a feeling that that might end up actually just being a thing. Oh, you, yeah. You just play, you know, like three Defiant Strikes in your Soulfire Grandmaster deck or whatever. Yeah, I I would not be surprised at all. Like, you know, this card is such a powerhouse that just like any cheap spell just feels like it has to be really good as a result. Yep. So uh, the rest of the main deck's the same, the lands, the Ascendancy, and the Token Makers. Let's go ahead and take a look at the sideboard and mm -hmm. see what kind of options we have since the sideboards for these decks have been changing ever since it was released. Mm-hmm. Hello everybody, we're back with the sideboard for the Jeskai Tokens deck. And uh, we have one new card uh, and a bunch of old standbys. And the new card I want to try out is Valorous Stance. So it's the, the new templating for the split cards. Uh, so it's one and a white for an instant, and we get to choose one. We get to make a creature indestructible to end of turn, or we get to destroy a creature with toughness four or greater. Which basically kills Corsair Kufix, Sea Trino, Doommate Giant, Wingmate Rock, Brimaz, and just about any other baddie besides Stormblood Dragon that you really want to get rid of. Yeah, Anafenza, et cetera. Yeah, I think this card's just actually very good. I think it even has main deck potential, but I'm not quite sure where it fits in or what deck it fits into yet. So I just kind of threw it in the sideboard here just to see what happens. Uh, we do have some Disdainful Strokes and some negate and a Negate as uh, some counter magic. Uh, erase for Whip of Erebos. Glare of Heresy, again, is, is just the best sideboard card in standard. We have a Scouring Sands for the Mirror, uh, which I think is... Uh, something that's been catching on, either Scouring Sounds or Volley of Boulders, I've even seen. No, Barrage of Boulders, barrage of I've boulders. seen getting some play. I feel like Scouring Sands is better if you just like have no way to ever trigger Ferocious, since it just does the same thing and Scries for one less mana. I mean, um, this deck can trigger Ferocious, but I still think Scouring Sands is probably still better. Yeah. And then we have a couple of Hushwing Griffs to fight Doomwake Giant and Sea Trino and a Wingmate Rock, uh, since it's just a very good card against... Uh, most of the decks in the format right now. So Yeah, it is. really is. Uh, this is the sideboard. I'm excited to see how the cards line up. Uh, uh, Brian is playing an Abzan deck, uh, which I'll probably bring the Valor Stance in against, so I'm interested to see how that card actually plays. I think being able to spend two mana to kill a Rhino or a, 
a uh, Corsair, but still have utility when you don't have those cards is something that a deck like this is needed for a while. Yeah, and I think this card could invigorate the Blue Eyed Heroic deck as well. Yeah, it's actually really good in that, in that deck. Yeah, it's a protection spell and a piece of removal that that deck has never had access to. Yeah. Joe Ross it Rejoice. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I guess we could say Tom Ross Rejoice. <laughs> yeah, Tom Rossett. Yeah, Tom. Man. I just, I just pictured Joe in a leather jacket, and it's kind of <laughs> awkward. <laughs> Let's jump into the games and see what happens. 